There's virtually no good comparisons on the internet concerning sticky off-road tires in the context of rock crawling, especially a good comparison to Reds versus Treps. You know, before we discuss Reds versus Treps, I'll explain what a sticky tire is. You know, basically, a sticky tire is made is a tire made from a much softer rubber compound than a standard street tire. You know, in the off-road world, uh, sticky tires began as special runs made for sponsored drivers. As the sport of rock crawling exploded into the new millennium, you know, sticky tires eventually became available to the public. They became commonplace. As rock sports, especially events like King of the Hammers and We Rocks, became more mainstream, lots of tire manufacturers jumped into the mix with their own competition compound tires. Maxxis currently makes two sticky tires for off-roaders, the Creepy Crawler and the Trepador. The Creepy Crawler is the old design, and the Trepador, known as the Trep, is the newer design. BF Goodrich sticky tire is known as the Red Label Crawler, affectionately known as the Red. The Red was the first sticky competition compound rock crawling tire available to the general public, and it's still the most popular today. Since 40-inch tires are the new 37s and 42s are the new 40s. I'll be reviewing 39-inch plus tires in this video. I currently wheel with about, I don't know, 50, 60 different rock buggies around the West, and none of them are on 37s. So this video will only include comparisons of the bigger tires. And lastly, let's clear up another fact. Any sticky tire is going to perform many times better off-road than a non-sticky tire will. Uh, you know, just like in drag racing, where a sticky compound drag slick will beat the pants off of any DOT street tire, the same holds true off-road. You know, don't listen to people that think because, you know, their, their K5 Blazer doesn't need sticky tires for their dirt roads in Ohio, that uh, they're not needed for rock crawling because they make a huge difference in rock crawling. You know, even on wet rocks, a sticky tire will outperform a non-sticky tire by a large margin when we're talking about rock crawling. Now, trust me, I know why you're really watching this video. You know, you, you want to know what sticky tire works better. Well, I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is that all sticky tires work pretty damn good. The bad news is that a lot of different factors come into play when deciding what sticky tire is best for you. I mean, let's be honest, everyone thinks the tire that they're currently running is the best tire. I don't care who it is. You know, it doesn't matter if a guy runs Treps or Red or an SX or a Sticky IROC. It's human nature to tell everyone that what you run is the best. You know, I'm here to tell you that thinking that Reds hook up better than Treps or vice versa is complete bullshit. You know, as long as you have a good Sticky tire, Factors such as rig design and driver skill play a much more important role than the brand of tire you're using. You know, rig design, total weight, weight distribution, suspension design, wheelbase, power, and driver skill play a more important role in how a rig will perform than the brand of tire. You know, honestly, a champion rock crawler like Jesse Haynes or Cody Wagner, you know, they'll kick ass with any sticky tire you give them. You know, it doesn't matter if Jesse and Cody swap red labels for traps, they'll still make most people look really bad in the rocks. A well-built buggy like a Red Dot is gonna kick ass over some Bubba-built poop pipe buggy. Also, some rich noob who spends 80,000 on a turnkey rock buggy is gonna get owned on the trail by an experienced driver and an old pile of parts buggy. I know though, you want to see videos of this tire versus that tire on the trail, and I'm going to give it to you, but keep in mind that these videos prove nothing because some rigs are better than others and some drivers are better than others. Regardless, here's some video of Reds versus Treps taking the exact same lines over the same obstacles on the same day. Hopefully my commentary helps keep things in perspective for you.
This is a fun little technical two-step waterfall in Johnson Valley, and I'm gonna use it as an example. Traction is really bad on this obstacle, and it does require a little bit of skill, so it's a pretty good place to do a comparison of tires. As you can see, this home-built rig on 42-inch Trepidors pretty much does it without any drama. This is Joey in his home-built buggy on 40-inch treps, there you go. making it look pretty Hell easy. Yeah. Woo! I like it. <laughs> oh, yeah! This is Richard Goatman on 40-inch treps, absolutely owning this obstacle. Goatman is the most experienced rock crawler in our group. These are a couple of guys in very expensive, well-built Jimmy's buggies on treps. Even though this rig has probably the best parts list of any of the buggies in this video, the driver is very inexperienced. They struggled on this obstacle for a long time and almost rolled it several times. You could tell by the use of too much throttle and not understanding rear steer and failing to use a front suck down that this guy lacks some experience. So this proves that driver skill is much more important than tires or parts. This is Crazy Cliff owning this obstacle on his 39 inch reds. Cliff has decades of experience in this rig and has wheeled almost every major obstacle in the Western United States in it. So he has a lot of experience. This is a well-built rock lizard buggy, also on 39 inch reds. The driver is borrowing his best friend's buggy. Even though the driver has been rock crawling for several years, this is literally his first time driving this buggy. He has absolutely no familiarity with how this rig handles or its controls. So familiarity with the rig is also more important than tires or parts. As you can probably tell from this video, owning reds or treps is the least of your problems. Having a well-built rig is a foundation. Gaining years of experience, situational rock crawling and Having an intimate familiarity with your rig is what matters the most. So you could see from this video, having either reds or treps didn't give any of the drivers a distinct advantage. So now that you saw some meaningless video of tires in use, I'm going to give you my objective opinion on the pluses and minuses of the various sticky tires out there. It's common in the tire industry for tires to run smaller than the advertised size. And the 40 inch Trepador will measure out closer to about 38 and a half inches. In fact, a 39 inch red label crawler and a 40 inch Trep are virtually the same size. Now the 42 inch Trepador is a different animal entirely. It's actually a true 42 inch tire. In fact, this one at 10 PSI on a 17 inch wheel is uh, just over 42 and a half inches tall. So, you know, this tire is about three and a half inches taller or four inches taller than a 40 inch Trep. In fact, it's about two inches taller than a 42 inch IROC and about a hair taller than a 43 inch TSL SX. You know, this is pretty much the only sticky tire I've ever seen that actually runs a little bit larger than the advertised size. You never see that. But running true to size and having a tough sidewall come at a price. You know, these Trepidors are really heavy. And mounted on a 17-inch trail-ready beadlock, the 42-inch Trep weighs 157 pounds. In comparison, a 40-inch sticky Trep on the same wheel weighs about 138 pounds, and a 39 inch red label mounted on the same wheel weighs about 125 pounds. So you can see there's, uh, as you make the step up to the 42 inch trep, you also make a huge step up in weight. 
Also note that the 42-inch uh, trip is a load range C tire, just like the red label. The 40-inch trip is a load range D tire, just like the uh, TSL SX. For rock crawling in a light buggy, I really prefer the C-rated tire, which is the one of the reasons I really like the 42. You can see these red labels, they break in real quick. I mean, these require almost no break-in time because the edges of the lugs come pretty rounded, unlike the treps. So these require almost no break-in time. I mean, they're pretty much good to go out of the box. And like with most sticky tires, they get better and better the further they wear down. In contrast, the sticky treps need to be broken in. And the more they wear, the better they perform. So once you round off these edges and feather back that top layer of rubber on there, they stick to rocks just as good as the reds do. But just be mindful that it takes a few trips out to properly break in your treps. Also, this tough sidewall needs to be ran at really low pressures for a while to kind of break in the sidewall too. So these do require a lot more break in than reds do. And one of the reasons these trepidors need a little bit of breaking in before they start hooking up good, as you can see, man, there's a lot of right angles on these lugs. A lot of straight edges on them. And basically, this takes away a lot of the surface area contact patch with rocks. So you need to round all these edges off really good. So you get that surface area, more surface area contact with the uh, the rock so it hooks up better. But uh, you can see there's a lot of really sharp edges on these tires when they're brand new. And uh, you need to round these off. You know, and if you look at the, uh, the BFG red labels, they don't have all these sharp edges that you need to round off. They're pretty rounded off brand new straight from the factory. So... That's one of the reasons that these treps do require a bit of breaking. The treps do have tougher sidewalls than the red labels do. You know, I see an even ratio of reds and treps in the large group of rock buggies that I wheel with, but the vast majority of sidewall issues have been with the reds. The trep sidewalls, they'll cut too. They just don't get cut as much. You know, neither tire has what I would consider a weak sidewall, but the Red Label Crawler is built on a radial tire carcass mold, so it's noticeably thinner than the TREP sidewall. The advantage to having a thinner sidewall is that the uh, Reds tend to flex a bit better than the TREPs do. You know, but they also puncture easier and don't run at high speeds with low air pressures as well as the TREPs do. So those long runs to the trailheads are much better with the treps. The thick, tough sidewall on the treps also give it an unusually thick bead. On a 17-inch beadlock, it's a good idea to wrap a few wraps of duct tape in the inner wheel bead hump to prevent the tires from burping air at single-digit pressures. All bias ply tires with super tough sidewalls suffer from this problem. Now let's talk about price. The 39 inch reds were about $185 cheaper per tire than a 40 inch trip was, you know, which saved a person almost $750 for a set of tires. And this fact alone is why many people chose the reds over the trips. And it's a good reason to buy them. But BFG recently made huge price increases on the red label crawlers. So reds are no longer really the cheap option. You know, because of this, I believe that we'll start seeing more treps than reds out in places like Johnson Valley in the near future. When you move up to 42-inch sticky tires, things change. The 42-inch treps are actually much cheaper than the 42-inch red labels. The 42-inch treps also run a 17-inch wheel, you know, which is more desirable for most people while the 42-inch reds run a less desirable 20-inch wheel.
Okay, we're about to do some durometer testing on these tires. And a durometer is basically a gauge that measures hardness. And uh, when we're talking about tires here, especially softer tires with competition compounds, you really need to be using a shore A durometer that measures on the shore A scale. So that's what we're going to do right now. And also be mindful that temperature makes a big difference in how hard or soft a tire compound is at any given moment, particularly with these sticky compound tires. With sticky compound tires, temperature makes a big difference. So to make this test fair, I'm going to get temperature readings, and all these tires are going to be tested at the same temperature. <clears throat> okay, now we have a 42-inch Maxxis Sticky Trepidor. And let's see here. 50. 50. 51. 50. 50. So the durometer on this is about 50. Just so we could see we're keeping everything fair here. This tire is about 58.3 degrees Fahrenheit. The time of the durometer reading. See these are 39 inch red labels. And about 60. 60. 57. Let's get this lug over here. 60. 59. 60. So it seems like it's about anywhere between uh, 57 and 60. So we'll call the average durometer reading on this about a 58. So, And just for comparison here, I'm going to get some durometer readings on these Nitto Trail Grapplers. These are 40 inch Nitto Trail Grapplers. These are not the competition compound. These are the regular street compound Nitto Trail Grapplers. So uh, let's see what kind of readings we get off of these. Uh, 63. 60. 63. 64. 64. 61. 63. 62. 64. So you can see this is in the range of uh, 61 to about 64 on the durometer. So these are actually pretty soft for a non-sticky tire. And these are the Nitto Trail Grapplers. And this Nitto Trail Grappler right here, so this is 58.3, same as the sticky tires. So you can see we're doing a fair comparison here. Super Swamper IROX. These are non-sticky IROX in 42 inch size. And these are also unused. And we get a durometer 70, 74. It's like 71, 74. Looks like about a 73, 74. So the uh, non-sticky 42-inch Super Swamper IROC is, you know, about the uh, 73, 74 range on the durometer. So let's review some of the results here of the durometer testing we just did. You know, the first thing you'll notice here, obviously, this is a Reds versus Trep video, but uh, the Maxxis Trepidors actually have a much softer compound, well they're manufactured with a much softer compound than the uh, BFG Red Labels or the TSL SX stickies are. 
So Maxis actually wins by a pretty good margin on having the softer compound of the other stick compared to the other sticky tires. But be mindful that durometer readings or the softness of a compound isn't the be all end all for how well a tire is going to hook up in the rocks. You know, other factors like the actual chemical composition of the compound and the tread design itself have a lot to do with how well a tire is going to hook up in the rocks. You know, you'll notice that, you know, the red label compound coming in at around 58 actually wasn't too far off of what uh, the Nitto Trail Grappler Street Compound tire is. But I have a feeling that the reason those red labels hook up so well is because there's so much flex and pliability in the tire carcass itself compared to a tire like these Trepidors. You know, these, the Trepidor and even the TSL SX have a really tough, stiff sidewall on them, and you're not going to get as much flex out of it. And, you know, and I'm just speculating here, but I think that a tire like the uh, Red Label Crawler, actually that really flexy, pliable compound uh, works to its benefit in the, ro in the rocks. But, you know, but with the Maxxis Trepidor, to counteract that, you get a much softer rubber compound and you get a strong sidewall with it. So you get a flexier tire, a flexier, more pliable tire with a weaker sidewall with the red label and you get a softer rubber compound with a tougher sidewall with the Maxxis Trepidor. But uh, we're discussing durometer readings here and uh, so far, it seems like the Trepidor is the king. All right, so I came out here this morning, and it is uh, a very brisk morning. Let's see what these tires are right now. About 29, 30 degrees right now. So these tires are below freezing right now. Let's check the durometer on them. So at freezing, let's see what the durometer is on these. Sixty. Sixty. Sixty one. Sixty three. Sixty two. About fifty nine. 63 so at freezing the durometer went way up on these so this you can actually feel it right now these lugs are pretty damn hard you know let's go over to this uh, non-sticky needle trail grappler at freezing and see what it uh, is at 60 so this sticky trap with the really soft rubber compound at freezing has the same durometer reading as this non-sticky needle trail grappler so that just goes to show you this uh, really soft sticky compound really gets harder in cold temperatures okay so I think I've proven pretty definitively that these non-sticky DOT street tires, the formulation of the compound these are made of, were made to perform across a varied temperature range, both high and low temperatures. In contrast, these competition compound sticky rock crawling tires didn't do too well when the weather got really cold and uh, tended to change a lot in hardness as the uh, temperatures went up and down. You know, as a matter of fact, on this particular Trepidor, uh, there was a 28 degree difference between basically that freezing reading I got at 30 degrees and the midday reading I got at, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, 58 degrees. So there was a 28 degree temperature difference and there was a, you know, 10, 11 point durometer difference on that. So basically as these tires got 20, as the temperature dropped 28 degrees, these sticky tires, the compound on them got roughly 20% harder in that time. So... I think I proved my point. 
So your perception that these sticky tires hook up bad on the rocks in very cold weather is absolutely based in fact. You know, when you talk to most of the guys that uh, wheel in northern climates, most of the time they run sticky tires in the summer and switch to uh, IROX or some other non-sticky tire in the winter, especially for snow runs. You know, if you want to learn more about this, Google glass transition temperatures for tires and uh, you'll get all the answers you need. Now that I've had more than a year on these 42 inch sticky trepidors, you know, let me give you an honest review of them. You know, where the trepidor stickies really shine in my opinion is on a general purpose recreational wheeler like this one right here. You know, let me give you some reasons for this. The treps have a sidewall that's tough enough to withstand different terrains. It is weaker than the SX, but it's a stronger tire than the BFG Crawler. Because of its thinner sidewall, Red Label flexes better than the Trep, but the Red is constantly folding over, where the Trep is only folding over when pressure is applied to the tire. The Treps also aren't as good in the mud as the SXs, but Treps are better than the Reds in those conditions. The Treps are lighter than the SX, but heavier than the Reds. The Treps are also a better tire for high speed runs with low air pressure. The Reds fold over easily at higher speeds, but the, and the SXs are usually balloony and poorly balanced. If you spend time in Johnson Valley, you know that you spend more time hauling ass around the desert than you do actually rock crawling on the trails. Also, Reds require almost no break-in, and Treps do need a break-in period. And lastly, the 42-inch Reds are a very expensive tire, especially compared to an SX. So what it boils down to is this. The BFG Red Labels give you more sidewall flex and a lighter weight at the expense of having a weaker sidewall. The Maxxis Trepidors give you a tougher sidewall and better performance at higher speeds at the expense of having less sidewall flex. You know, for a moon buggy or cone dodger, the BFG Reds are an excellent choice. For a hill killer, rock bouncer, swamp buggy, or woods runner, the TSL SX is a great choice. But for a general purpose, do-it-all trail rig, the, stippy, the sticky treps are really hard to beat. You know, the trep is like the Swiss Army knife of sticky tires. And before we get any further, you need to be mindful that sticky tires aren't always great. In fact, in some situations, they flat out suck. Also, another bad aspect of sticky tires is that they wear out extremely fast. You know, they should never be run on pavement at all. I have a buddy who put some red labels on his Jeep and drove to the Rubicon Trail and back from Los Angeles. You know, he basically ruined a $2,600 set of tires on one trip. You know, these sticky tires are for trail use only. You know, even in places like Sand Hollow and Moab, where traction on that sandpaper-like slick rock is fantastic, sticky tires also wear extremely fast. You know, it's pretty common to climb, climb up an obstacle in Sand Hollow and cover the rocks with rubber dust from your stickies. You know, just be mindful that stickies are going to wear a lot faster than a non-competition tire. I never ran reds in the sand, but I know for a fact that the treps are horrible in the sand. My buggy has about 500 horsepower, but all these treps want to do in sand is dig a hole straight down to China. But I find that mud terrain tires in general are poor performers in the sand. So don't plan on killing any competition hills at your local sand dunes with any of these tires. The guys wheeling back east or in the Midwest absolutely love the TSL SX because it performs fantastic in muddy, sloppy conditions. It cleans out good in the mud and it has a very tough sidewall that resists punctures from uh, tree branches and roots that they frequently drive over. By contrast, the guys out west 
You know, they love the reds and the treps because the tread pattern hooks up better in the rocks and uh, it gives them a lot more sidewall flex and probably saves a little bit in the weight department compared to the SX. Basically, the SX is a better tire for hill killing and the reds and treps are better tires for technical rock crawling. I recently watched guys win re-rock competitions on both reds and treps. And those competitions came down to who the better driver was on that day. You know, not what tire they were running. I've seen rigs on treps and reds win the uh, trail breaker event at Trail Hero, which is probably the toughest rock crawling competition in the world. You know, I've seen Shannon Campbell kick ass at the King of Hammers on BFGs, Goodyear's, Maxxis, and Nitto tires. So my point is that if you have a good sticky tire, no matter what brand it is, the driver and his machine are far more important than whether you have a red or a trep. You know, I love the 42 inch treps for the type of wheeling I do, which is a mix of technical rock crawling, uh, general trail runs, blasting through the desert, and you know, wheeling in different types of terrain. You know, by the same token, I plan on building a small, lightweight, single seat buggy in the near future, maybe off a rock lizard chassis or something, uh, for some of the really technical stuff. And I'll probably put 39 inch red labels on that. You know, if you ask about tires, people almost always give you a biased opinion based off of what they run or what somebody that they idolize runs. You know, hopefully this video gave you some objective insight on sticky tires for your future rock crawling. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like my content, feel free to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching and keep the rubber side down.